So here I have a file with monthly temperature anomaly data. The way how this file is organized is somewhat unconventional. Usually we will find time series data, even if they are monthly, in one column let's say one column and all the column down we find all the monthly data. Here however the way how the data are organized is that the years are in the rows and then the months we have across. Okay here to December these are other, these are quarterly data and annual data so the the flow of the data is from here all the way over here to December and then the next data are these. And the task we now have is to create one column with all the monthly data in the right order. Turns out this isn't, although this sounds like a pretty straightforward way, it's actually not so easy. We have to be a little bit tricky. And the best way to do that, at least I think so, there are several ways to do that, is to first think about what should the resulting spreadsheet look like. Okay, so we want years, months and then the temperature anomalies. So we know what the first year is going to be, 1880 and the first month is January and then we have February, March and so forth. Actually Excel is quite clever if we copy this down we will uh, automatically get all the months. Now here of course we want 1880 as well so 1880 doesn't change for the first year. So and now I want to create the structure of the years and months for my entire data set. Um, so how many um, how many data points will I have we're going all the way to 2017, so that's in row 140, and we're losing two. We're having 139 years, and let's see, 130, uh, 38. It was 138 times 12 is 1,656 data. So that's how far I want to go down. Now it's a bit unpractical to type all the years and the months, of course. So from here onwards, we do a little trick. In the year column, I write a formula. I say equal to the year 12 months prior plus 1. And for the month, I, so I say, well, this month is equal to the month 12 months prior and nothing else. Okay. And now I can just copy this down, track, track this highlighted two boxes on the little box on the bottom right corner and now I think we have to go down to 1650 or something. Let's see how far did we get. Oh that was pretty close. September 2017 is our last observation so we'll delete these. Brilliant. So now just one little thing in here I now have formula Okay, I want to get rid of the formula. The way how I do it is I highlight both columns, I press Control C to copy, and then I go to Paste and I say Paste Values. Okay, so now the formulas have, formula have disappeared and these are just years and months. So now I want here the temperature anomaly data. Turns out that it's going to be easier if I move this one column to the right and I include another column here and I call it month, month column. Now what do I mean with here? Now I know I'm going to use the VLOOKUP command to copy the data across. And if you remember we look up works like this. I want to find the year 1880 in this big table. We only have to go to December and we 
gonna go all the way down and knowing the VLOOKUP command we make sure that we will already put dollar signs into the cell references so that the table doesn't move. So now from which column do I want the data? Well I want it since the data are organized in all the data for one month in one column I want it from the January column which is the one to the second column. So I say two here and then false because I want exact matches. So when I press enter I should find in my monthly spreadsheet the value of negative 0.57. So uh, it says it has uh, uh, a parenthesis is missing that's not actually quite correct. What's missing is a comma after the A2. So it's a comma. So. And here we go. Here's our value, negative 0.57. Now when I copy this down, let's see what happens. Well, I get negative 0.57 every time because I'm still looking for year 1880 and I'm looking for it all the time in the second column. Well, I didn't want to change that. So here as well, I'm looking in the second column. But really, for February, I want to look in the third column for March in the fourth, for April in the fifth. So therefore, I'm including this extra column here. January was the second column, Feb the third, March the fourth, and so forth, until we get to December. That should be column 13. That's right. And then we shall repeat this sequence. So we just go we copy that value and then we can copy this down. Just double click on the little box and it just it will fill that column all the way to the end. And so you can see it repeats the sequence of numbers from 2 to 13 representing the columns from which we pick the data. And now we go back to our formula. Instead of manually entering 2, we enter the value in the month column. So of course for the first value that doesn't change anything because it still picks from the second column but as we now copy down it now picks the values negative 0.41, negative 0.28, let's see that that's what we want, negative 0.41, negative 0.28, that's exactly what we wanted and let's just double click this little box here on the bottom right and it will fill up the column all the way. Let's check again a couple of values. Let's say April 81. It says negative 0.04. April 81, negative 0.04. So that's brilliant. That works. And let's check another value a little further down. Um, let's say um, July 1901. Actually, exactly zero. So let's check that. July 1901 that is this value here and it's exactly zero so that's brilliant so whenever you do data work like this you of course have to check that uh, Excel did exactly what you wanted so here we have our monthly temperature anomaly and of course you could look at this now in a nice line graph something that wasn't possible uh, before Let's see. Uh, here we go. Charts. Line. Here we go. Here we have our nice line graph. Okay. See, there's of course a lot of um, a lot of monthly variation in here. Uh, perhaps we want to get our data, our year data, onto the x-axis. Um, one way to do that is right mouse click into the graph go to select data and here we have horizontal axis labels and we just go to edit and we now just include our 
A column. It goes down to 1600 something. Here we go, we're at the end. And press OK. And you see we now have the years and our graph, which is at the top, will now have the years. Now you could further manipulate your graph, but I'll leave that uh, for another place.